Uh, so my name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you are watching Watch Out for Fireballs. It is a retro games podcast. Yes, and this week we are talking about Pokemon Yellow um, in specific. In general, the first generation of Pokemon. Um, AKA the bad one. <laughs> right. I mean, sorry. It is like, it's a rough one. Yeah. It's a yeah. rough one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that is a, uh, a role-playing game developed by Game Freak and published by Nintendo for the Game Boy in uh, 1999, specifically the uh, the yellow version that we're talking about. Yes. And uh, we know uh, some people said they were not familiar with the show, just so you know what we do. Um, we are an old games book club, essentially. Every episode we choose a game, um, talk about it. It's kind of half Let's Play, half analysis. So we go through everything in the game. Um, we talk about what works and what doesn't. Um, the live episodes tend to be a little bit breezier. Um, so look forward to that. Uh, but that's what we are. If you go to duckfeed.tv, you can see the entire network of shows. Yes. Uh, but this is the one that is concerned with old games. Yes. And uh, uh, the definition of retro, for anybody who is curious, is very fluid and flexible. Yes. Um, 1999 doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but all of us are on an inexorable march to the grave. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we are pretty fast and loose with that because it, it turns out there's no governing body. Yeah. Um, we, we thought there would be. We thought they were like, oh, some, some guy in like a spacesuit is going to come and tell us what's retro. It didn't happen. We, we could just call whatever we want retro. They're just words, guys. Um, so again, just for the recording, I said I was going to ask you guys this again. Uh, if anybody, um, so everybody who's here who has never uh, seen the show or is just here checking it out, uh, say, uh, say hi uh, at 3, 2, 1, and I'll say, so 3, 2, 1, go, not 3, 2, go. Those, that's... I don't even have words for how these awful three two go so, is. So, confusing. Uh, so uh, three, two, one. Hi. Hi. Oh, that's a lot of you. Uh, thank you for, for just coming out. Very few of you who are quite loud. Yeah, yeah. Either or. <laughs> um, uh, no, oh, no, we, we don't, don't have, have any of those. Um, also, if everybody at the same time could uh, say their favorite Pokemon as well. Yeah. So, uh, three, two, one. Yeah. Nope, too. it's Snorlax. <laughs> so it's, you guys, you guys had one shot at this and you guys messed it up. It's Snorlax. Okay, so, so that's the end. Yeah. Yeah. That was the test. Patreon.com. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, we're going to get into it talk about uh, Pokemon yeah. Yellow. As ridiculous as this sounds, uh, we are going to try and look at Pokemon with fresh eyes. So if we're describing a thing that everybody has taken for granted, um, it's because this is a part of kind of like, uh, you know, our shared yeah, heritage in terms of the feel so it feels like they've always been around. This is a good use of the word heritage. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was, I, I, I almost went to culture and that's that no, which, yeah, game. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. Really, either way, it's not good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in this game uh, you are a young kid and you live in this world full of monsters. Yes. It's your goal uh, to capture them, train them, <laughs> fight them, and uh, kind of befriend them. Yeah. Um, it is uh, it varies the degree to which mechanics enforce that or that is successful throughout the series. Yeah, it is mostly about the exploitation of these magical creatures. Um, and so uh, there are 151 Pokemon in Generation 1, um, and uh, they add roughly 100 uh, per generation. kind of varies as it goes along. Right now, uh, you know, 20 years in, there are, what, upwards of 700 Pokemon? Yeah. Uh, soon to be upwards of 800. Yeah, there are a with, lot. Uh, Sun and Moon. Um, yeah. yeah. And it is, uh, it's getting really hard to uh, keep track of them. Yeah. Like a, you know, the original 151 is a weakness. I can, I can name all of those. It just that's, goes right, it's a bullet directly to my heart. Uh, but the uh, later ones, it's just like, I don't know what the name of this this particular, like, plug is. <laughs> yes, it is off-brand Pidgey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, off Pidgey. Uh, yeah. I'm going to let Cole take this pronunciation to the live episode. My uh, pronunciation of names that are not yes. American is famous. We, we cannot drop a marker here. We could. Yeah. Uh, too lazy to. <laughs> um, so uh, the series was created by uh, uh, Satoshi Jajiri, I believe is how you pronounce that, uh, who is a game designer um, who has kind of this lifelong passion for collecting insects. Um, and that's where kind of the naturalist cataloging aspect of this series kind of came from, this idea of going out and uh, kind of being a completionist about kind of seeing and catching all of them. Yeah, and kind of a, like a fascination with the natural world and stuff, which yeah. is a very realistic, grounded aspect of the series, uh, which is in contrast to exactly how weird and bonkers the actual series is, <laughs> yeah. which is a big reason that I, as a 36-year-old man, am still a fan of this <laughs> series, is because it is so, so uh, absurd. Yes. It is, it is amazing. Um, yeah. So what's even crazier about that? Generation 1 takes place in a region called Kanto, which I understand is a region in Japan. There are glimpses of the real world. You can go to a museum and see, like, the Space Shuttle Columbia 
Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's canon. Yeah. So it, it's, it, it presumably takes place in some kind of post-apocalyptic future, and these are like finding the you know, Statue of Liberty on the beach. Like, yeah. That's the idea when you, when you find that. Um, but in this world, all the animals are monsters that have varied and ridiculous backstories, all of which are very dangerous, many of which can learn like, to bite you if you're lucky. And if you're very unlikely, uh, you know, use psychic powers to like scramble the, you know, yeah. small bones in your ear to make it so you accidentally stab yourself whenever you try to like eat a sandwich. Um, it is. It, it would be a nightmare. Uh, this is one of the that knife sandwich. Yeah, exactly. It was a little sandwich chew. You, you know, deserves our respect as well. Uh, the so this is uh, one of the things. The implications of this. So in this world, um, everything revolves around Pokemon. It is. Uh, it is. It's really, really complete. Yeah. Cities are built around gyms. Uh, these gyms are not so much places where they uh, um, improve Get Pokemon. Yeah, it's it's not for it's not for shredding up your uh, your lats as a matchup. It's more where cultists stand around in patterns. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least the way it's presented. A lot of little wall staring <laughs> around there. Um, yeah. And the only measure of respect you can have in the society is related to Pokemon as well. So you can either be uh, the world's preeminent expert. But that position is taken. Yes. So uh, the other thing you can do is collect badges uh, uh, from doing your, your little cute cute cockfights, and uh, th this demonstrates your mastery over Pokemon, and then people people like you. Then. Yes. And uh, eventually, um, in Gen One here, you end up becoming the Pokemon champion by defeating the presiding masters, the Elite Four, and your childhood best friend, who is a monster monster child. Yeah, um, he's he's the worst. Yep. He's a problem child in the uh, strict in the proper sense of the term. In the, um, in the John Ritter movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He is the worst. Um, yeah, that's a, that's the essentially the, the game. Um, the battles are turn-based, so uh, you either fight wild Pokemon or you fight other trainers. Yes. Um, so turn-based in the JRPG kind of Dragon Quest <laughs> tradition. Yep, and uh, you can carry up to six monsters. Each of these monsters can have up to four moves. So the composition of your team um, is uh, something you have a lot of control over, actually. But one of the things I was talking about, uh, why being totally beyond this target demographic, I still like these games a lot, um, is that uh, you make a lot of choices in this game. Like you have a lot of control over your team composition. Um, even games I very much love that are like Dragon Quest games, uh, early entries in that series, or you know Final Fantasy is up to four, including four over. Yeah. Uh, you don't make any choices. Like you just you buy the best equipment whenever you get to a town, and that's the end of it. You learn spells automatically. Here you have an amazing amount of uh, kind of control over this because of types, uh, multiple types, move types, um, which types you want to have learned. So your party, if you consider it um, your character to kind of all six of your Pokemon to be kind of a character, it's a really complex living, breathing character in a way that reminds me of much more tactically deep games. So like your yeah. Final Fantasy Tactics and, yeah. and the like. Um, that comes from, as we, I mentioned, uh, types. So Yeah, and uh, types is really about being prepared. It's about having a very well-rounded, diversified uh, party. Each Pokemon can have up to two types, um, and uh, these determine their strengths and weaknesses, uh, particularly against each other. This is um, the world's biggest and most complex game of rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, it's, it, every every office tool is, is used. And these uh, these sometimes make sense and are intuitive. They get less intuitive as the series goes on, but even <laughs> initially, it doesn't make sense for Poison to be weak against Psychic. I can't think of what would be not weak against Psychic uh, in, in like, intuitiveness, and they actually kind of follow that in Gen 1. Like It is uh, it, it is very, very overpowered. Yeah. Um, but in Gen 1, uh, they're not very well balanced. A lot of the types are kind of goofy, neglected, or overpowered. Yeah. Um, so same thing with move typing. Um, the thing, going back to Gen 1 and replaying it, they kind of surprised me. Uh, I think half, fully half of the moves are normal type, which is really weird and, and bizarre and, and yeah. frustrating. So and normative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're move normative. Um, yeah, so you can have like a, a cool, po you know, poison Pokemon, but there's like one poison move that does damage or something yeah. like that. Like, or it doesn't get a move that matches its type um, until much later on. So you're going to be dealing with these kind of specialized monsters that do have weaknesses. Um, that don't have the strengths that kind of go along with that, at least on the offensive side. Yep. Um, your Pokemon will learn moves automatically. Uh, they also get uh, evolve into things that are uglier uh, and stronger. So you make a, uh, there's a constant trade-off between whether you want to have an effective team or like a team of cute stuffed animals that like you could love and cuddle. Yeah. Um, with, with very few exceptions to things not turn into straight up abominations. Like anytime somebody is real into Squirtle, which like a couple people said Squirtle, I think. Squirtle's good. Um, Squirtle eventually grows 
guns? Like under his shell in like a, uh, like is it a Cronenberg, like they're firing teeth? Yeah. Is it, uh, or is it just metal? Like It's, it's like a Tetsuo the Iron Man thing. Like yeah. He, he got like a metal splinter and then just all of a sudden, yeah. Whatever it is, it's not cute. And, and I, some, you know, they ain't that cute. And I, I don't want to, I'm not going to cuddle that bad boy. So that is a, a good reason not to, uh, not to enjoy the, the, the comic stylings of Squirtle. Or <laughs> Squat. So. Squirtle spot goals. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, you can also teach uh, the, your, your Pokemon, uh, you know, friendship and love and how to uh, uh, body slam each other uh, <laughs> with uh, TMs and HMs. And HMs are really, uh, so technical machines, hidden machines, these are ways to kind of like give your Pokemon moves. HMs are a thing that I understand might be going away in this upcoming one and good riddance. This is, um, I spent a lot of time in preparing for this, uh, either trying to conceive of a good reason why these would exist, or like looking online for, you know, think pieces, <laughs> like, you know, salon.com. <laughs> HMs are actually very, you know, very problematic. I'm trying to find something that would defend this mechanic, and I can't. Uh, the two things I can think of um, is one, um, it gates things, uh, so, you know, you don't want you to be able to cross water, but the game doesn't want you to be able to cross water until a certain point. Yeah. You can do that with anything. And there's a boat. Uh, in the game. Like, we know people don't cross on Pokemons, they take the SS Annie. Um, the other thing is that uh, the idea of being like, oh, in this world, you are a partner with your Pokemon. Uh, the two of you team up to do everyday things. Um, so there would be like HMs that like help you like carry your laundry and stuff like that in this world. <laughs> but as a gameplay conceit, it's a nightmare. Uh, yeah. Because it's impossible not to resent um, having something that's very valuable. You only get four slots, you only get six Pokemon. You have 24 different verbs, and having five of them taken up is really significant. Yeah. Uh, and some of them are useful in battle, but most of them are not. Yeah. And uh, it sucks and I hate it. Uh, <laughs> I resent it. So there's a, like a weird kind of meta about this, about having an HM slave, which is just like... I like that word. Yeah, yeah, that feels, you know, that, that's a, that feels inappropriate. And then also, uh, what, a, what a bummer, if the idea behind these things is to make you like, like your friends, like, these are, these are my buddies I hang out, except for Rattata. Yeah. Like, <laughs> these guys are all my friends, not this guy. Yeah. Like, that's so sad. I, <laughs> like, Stay in the sixth They're lot, clearly Rattata. sentient. <laughs> like, they have feelings, it's in the canon. I mean, like, like, it might be a dog, like, like, like a service dog, you just feel he's happy being useful, you know? That's pretty cool, yeah. actually, so I, 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 I retract my statement. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it, it, it bums me out. I, I wanted to go away so badly. Yeah, um, so it's kind of nice. Like it's neat. I dig gating and stuff, especially like oh, I'm going back to these old areas. The game's design just doesn't doesn't fit that for me uh, in, a, in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, so if you want to catch a wild Pokemon, uh, you have to beat that Pokemon to within an inch of its life, paralyze it, then poison it, yeah. and then digitize it in some kind of Eldritch Horror Ball. Yeah, <laughs> into, a prison, into the mirror dimension from Superman. You know, uh, the Phantom Zone. Yeah, the Phantom, Phantom Zone, zone. yeah. <laughs> to go in there. The uh, true story, uh, Snorlax is my favorite Pokemon, as I said. I just thought it'd be funny if that was the end of it. <laughs> it's not good. I'm going somewhere, but uh, since they introduced them, I always catch them in a luxury ball. Because is there any other Pokemon that you want to have like in like a luxury ball? Like it just seems nice. Like he's already a big boy. He's gonna need some extra space. And just him like surrounded by like bean bags and pillows and kind of like Turkish carpets and stuff. Like I really like the idea of that. Yeah. A smaller Snorlax could him grapes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you just put him up in uh, Pokeball uh, Comfort Plus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, other Pokemon you can only get by evolving, by getting them up to a certain level, as we said, making them into monstrosities. Um, uh, sometimes they have items uh, that you can uh, use on them, different stones. Um, and uh, some of them uh, you get by trading. Yeah, they only evolve when they trade, which is another mechanic that I find frustrating even though I get it. Yeah. Uh, I think the idea is just to encourage you to play with other people. Um, there are a lot of mechanics for that. You know, you can't get all the Pokemon unless you trade with people. Um, but, you know, I never play these games with people, so I will never own an Alakazam. <laughs> I love Gengar. Guys, I love Gengar. And I will <laughs> never have a Gengar, Gengar. and it's like, it sucks. <laughs> Where's my parade? <laughs> um, so, like, why, why should you care about this? This is, like, super old game. Yes. Um, you know, this is kind of this multimedia cultural force. You know, like, it came out as a game, it was it was imagined as a game, but, like, right away it had an anime, it had a, uh, had a card game that went along with it. Um, and it's been around for, like, two decades now. If you look out on that floor, everything is Pokemon. It, yeah, it's Pokemon City. There are more Pokemon shirts than any other individual single thing. Every yeah. booth is full of Pokemon, like... It's, it's, 
It's really huge. Everybody um, else liked it, so you should like it too. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, the, it's but easy it's, to take it as culturally relevant. Yeah. Is the uh, the I think. Well, yeah, and, and especially again because of Pokemon or Pokemon Heritage Go. Relevant. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> um, but um, it's easy to take it for granted just because it is kind of the, like the, like the the air almost. Yes. Um, but it is a charming, charming game, and you go to this with um, fresh eyes. Like it is funny um, in a lot of ways. Um, there's so much personality. Um, just apparent, they, they get so much mileage out of like three colors, uh, like 32 pixels by 32 pixels, and like a tiny little digitized sound effect mm -hmm. to like convey everything you need to know about these Pokemon's personalities. Like, I can look at Snorlax and be like, oh, I got that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I know that guy. <laughs> He's, um, yeah, it is, it's really, really cute. And the, uh, it's, that kind of plays into that first point where this is one of the rare things I feel like is a cultural touchstone that, uh, is not like overrated. Like, I'm just kind of always happy when I see this, and it's like, oh, they did, they did a good job. Like, this is really, really cute. This feels like something that has always existed, yeah. you know, in, uh, in a way that I really appreciate. Okay. Um, that charm, though, uh, comes with a, what part of it is, so it's not just for kids, where they're just like, oh, Charmander's cute, I love him. <laughs> There's, like, the dark side of it that a appeals to post-irony adults like us. <laughs> and the, uh, so we're going to do a little game I didn't prepare a rap for, it, but uh, which Pokemon <laughs> is darkest? And we'll let you guys decide which of these uh, is the most bone-chilling Pokemon description <laughs> yeah. that we have on offer here. Yep, these are all from the, uh, the yellow version. Each version has different descriptions. Uh, for these monsters, and you can find all these on Bulbapedia uh, to get a complete picture of how multifacetedly horrifying they are. But let's go back and forth. So first we have Omastar, who's kind of like a like a helix monster, like shell kind of thing. It says its shell was too big for it to move freely, so it became extinct. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was laboring under its own protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like a Greek myth. <laughs> um, Cabotops. Uh, it slices. I'm sorry, its you said that the wrong. Cabo chops. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it slices its prey with its sharp sickles and drinks the body fluids. So <laughs> he's not just after blood. Like no, you have no, to no. imagine, he's like he's getting up on that lymph train too. Yeah. Um, that's very non-specific with fluids. Lymph train. <laughs> lymph train. <laughs> uh, how about Mr. Mime? Everybody's favorite weirdo, Mr. Mime. It makes enemies believe something exists that really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, this is, I'm, I'm going to say this joke again. I said it earlier. I feel <laughs> self-conscious about it. But when, when I read this, and I was like, oh, like the value of a liberal arts degree. Uh, uh, self-burn. Uh, yeah, I'm self-burn. <laughs> what a stupid waste of money, though. Um, uh, Cubone, which is the famous dark Pokemon, uh, wears the skull of its deceased mother. Its cries echo inside the skull and come out as a sad melody. Uh, so, so he's in a brass bowl made of his own family. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, and finally here, uh, Victory Bell, which lures prey with the sweet aroma of honey. Swallowed whole, the prey is melted in a day, bones and all. The bones, we didn't add the bones and all. No. Like, <laughs> like, that's in the thing. That's in the text. And the other thing that's scary about that is that's actually how pitcher plants work. <laughs> like, that could just be from an encyclopedia, like a botanical guy. Um, so those, you know, uh, victory bells are real. Um, so yeah, so they've got that kind of, you know, I don't know how much of that is translation, how much of it is intentional, but it's amazing. And it continues throughout the series. Like, new Pokemon have these these awesome, like, descriptions. You're like, oh my god. Like, it's a ghost that just threw away children. Like, What's going on? I need that guy on my team. Um, yeah, so um, as we mentioned, we talked about this a little bit. Like, this is a very solid kind of JRPG. You have that, a lot of those choices, diversity in your moveset that's really fantastic. Um, you know, you have this sense that, uh, you know, in those old kind of Dragon Quest mold games where, like, you are getting better. Like, your progress is very easy to measure, your Pokémon gets stronger in very measurable ways um, through evolution and new moves, and you will make progress in the world that matches that in a way that is, like, a satisfying loop. Yeah. Um, again, in general, it is worse handled in Gen 1 than it is later, but... Yeah, they were very much getting their, getting their feet under them, but we'll yeah. talk about the way that the, uh, that is, uh, uh, kind of grown alongside that. Um, it's also like a dopamine machine. Like, when you see a new Pokemon, when, you know, uh, either it's out in the wild or a, uh, a trainer through something at you that you haven't seen before, there's that flush of novelty. Like, oh, gosh, like, let's see how this thing fights. I want to get that. Um, and it's just kind of the thrill of pursuing that and kind of filling out the, uh, the Pokedex. Like, I'm not a collector. I don't, you know, I don't have that don't have that mentality, but in this game, like, I love the novelty that it presents you with. And so the, the fun thing about a new generation coming out, you get to see a bunch of new weirdos, <laughs> and then this is a big reason why I think, you know, Pokemon Go was so successful, or at least for me, you know, I played it for a few weeks, and then I got sick of just seeing the same things, and that's yeah. what made me quit, but for a little, 
wow, excuse me. <laughs> for a little while, it was very fun to be able to like walk around and be like, I've never, I haven't seen this thing, you know, before, and that was fun. Like, uh, you know, there's no uh, other real word for it. It's satisfying. Yeah. Um, this, so this is supposed to be a very, this is a very versatile experience. Um, it is designed to be a pretty easy single player game because it's designed for kids, but uh, a pretty competitive uh, multiplayer game. Yes. Um, because um, it is vibrant and deep uh, in a way that we don't have a lot of experience with. No. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we didn't, uh, we you know, played through it. We know the Pokemon games. Uh, neither of us are competitive people in general. Right. We're soft Midwestern boys. <laughs> and the, uh, so we, you know, don't do that. But I, my understanding is that it is a thriving scene. Uh, every generation there is a, a meta, it is a complicated uh, kind of thing where there's all these terminology, you know, sweepers and, and movers and all these things, different kinds of Pokemon you can have. It is a whole thing. Okay, so let's play roller derby term or Pokemon term. I, 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 don't, I know too many roller prepared. derby yeah, terms, okay. so I could, I could eliminate all of them. <laughs> yeah. So. But, um, yeah, so, so there's that. Uh, it, it, I feel like underqualified to even talk about some of the stuff that takes place in, in the competitive scene. Like, there are stats and things that are not visible to the player that people have only been able to really ascertain by uh, kind of like looking at what's happening with the code as this goes along. This is, uh, this is a game that especially in Gen 1 is held together with bailing wire and twine. I assume a ditto is used in there to uh, uh, gum up the works. Um, but uh, you have things like effort values, which is a really cool thing actually, which is a, a way that they make sure that trained Pokemon will always be stronger than wild Pokemon of the same uh, level and type mm -hmm. and species. Yeah. Um, and this also, you know, this is something that will happen, you'll get a Pokemon and it will have these different values and it'll be different, so my Pikachu will not be the same as yours. Right. Uh, which makes, you know, training one of these things for competition kind of a nightmare where you just kind of keep going until you find one that's good enough, good enough to start. Mm -hmm. um, speed runs of the game also do similar things to that, like if you're going for a world record speed run, you want a specific kind of high value Pokemon and it is random. Um, so that's a bummer. Uh, it, you know, again, for like single player experiences, yeah. it is, uh, you know, I imagine it being difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a uh, stab, which we uh, alluded to a little bit, uh, same type attack bonus. If you are a fire Pokemon and you use a fire move, you'll do more damage. Um, that's a big problem with Gen 1, where a lot of uh, Pokemon don't get stab moves or don't get them until way late, uh, yeah. naturally. Yeah. Um, so Pokemon Yellow is uh, part of this thing that Nintendo was doing with the series for a while, where initially two, a, a pair of games would come out, Pokemon Red and Blue, Pokemon Gold and Silver, Emerald, Sapphire, on and on, and they would uh, a short while later release a third one, which was kind of like a synthesis of the two, like a like a like a small upgrade. Um, and so this is that upgrade to Red and Blue, uh, which came before this uh, here in America. Um, and this was kind of like a like a building bridge or a building block toward keeping people tied it tied it over until Pokemon Gold and Silver came out. Yes, and yeah. this uh, this came out uh, largely because of, or is influenced by the success of the anime. Yes. Um, so the anime was wildly successful, everyone knows, uh, knows about it. Um, this takes elements from that. So certain characters, uh, Team Rocket shows up, um, the Pokemon actually will look different uh, to match their anime forms. Uh, yes. Including the weird thin yeah. Pikachu, <laughs> like the thin Mario, like... It's it's for a little while where everyone is really into like let's make the like the fat version of the character like let's get fat fat Chocobo and stuff like that but now we're moving into like the creepy thin versions <laughs> like that, that's that's the the new millennium yeah um, so just like the anime uh, Pikachu rather than hanging out in a ball he is disobedient and downright just damn churlish <laughs> and he will uh, he follows you wrong rather than going into a Pokeball yes and so you have this little guy behind you uh, which makes you have to press the button. Uh, twice if you want to walk over his square so you can train and change places. It's yep. actually a little bit frustrating. Oh, and, and it takes longer to get into the Poke, Poke Center, get yep. healed and stuff like that. Like, it's it's kind of frustrating. Yeah, um, uh, but if you talk to him, he makes a little digitized sound clip and you see uh, how he likes you. And there's a weird surfing mini game that's like pretty hidden. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I like it. It's like a, it's like excite bike. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's not bad. It's yeah. just a, it's just a weird little addition. Um, it's not weird that it's there. It's weird that there's not more. Yeah. Um, and this is based on the anime. And like real quick to camp out, uh, I think the Pokemon anime is really pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I watched this when I was when it came out. So again, I'm well past the sell by date on this. I'm a 36 year old man. I was watching this when I was in high school. So I was like 18. Yeah. Um, you know, 18, 19. Uh, and uh, 18, I was in high school, 19. But I, I would like, get up early, or just after high school, I'd wake up and uh, like watch it in the morning because it was unpredictable. Um, and it is, it's goofy. Like it is trying to be funny and is funny. Uh, succeeds. It's full of like ridiculous puns. It is full of these like world building details that, again, and as a post irony adult, like it is, uh, you know, they're they're kind of perplexing in a fun way. 
Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it kind of stands up. Yeah. So. I would only ever get to watch this when I went over to my dad's house because some Poker Dad. Yeah, Poker Dad, <laughs> yeah. Uh, because some bakery in the cable networks, uh, he got WGN, and that was the only channel. It was oh, on. yeah. Yeah, and so, uh, like, that was one of the best things about going over there. Um, yeah, no, but uh, it, it, is, it is definitely good. And, like, watching anything that has come out later, like the movies, uh, for one of our bonus shows, we just did the Pokemon Origins, which is completely soulless. Like, yeah, it, it's the worst. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the movies are also real serious. They become like, it's like the, the power of Mewtwo. Like they become this very like serious thing about these legendaries as opposed to this goofy little story about going town to town and dealing with the Squirtle Squad. Reference earlier, which is like a bunch of Squirtles and sunglasses that do crimes. <laughs> and like, they're like the best. Like it is really, really funny. Like, <laughs> They love their delinquents. Um, and that's very funny. Like, I don't know if that works for me in a big bad way. <laughs> um, so there are some changes to the base game. They uh, they shift up the Pokemon that are available to you. Um, all of the starters are accept are accessible. Uh, so you don't have to make that choice between you know, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. Uh, you could just stumble upon them out in the world, which is which is always nice. Like yeah, and are. there's special events. Like, people will show up and be like, we'll give you, you look like a nice guy. Here's a, here's a Bulbasaur. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, which, Okay. It doesn't happen to me in real life. No. Right? Like, it's, it's a fantasy, fantasy game. But you have to start out with Pikachu. Yeah. Uh, so you can do that, which actually changes the game. Um, I was at a booth uh, here today, and I noticed uh, there was a guy who had a bunch of ROM hack versions of this. And a bunch of the ROM hacks just change who you start with. But because the uh, gym order is more or less prescribed in the beginning, it does really change the game. Um, there's like a Pokemon Pink version, and you start with Jigglypuff. And like, wow, that would be really different. Like, that would be harder in different parts and easier in different parts. And so there's this element of like build. <laughs> to it, like you can go through this game in different builds. It is weirdly deeper than, than you think, and your starter matters yes. uh, quite a bit. In the original version with uh, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, you're essentially choosing a difficulty. Uh, because Charmander is the hardest because of those type of advantages, Bulbasaur is the easiest, and Squirtle's in the middle. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, Brock is a wall for fully half of the ones you, you can start with in Gen 1. Yeah. You know, and, uh, him as the first, uh, the first gym leader. So our usual approach on these shows is to kind of go through the games beat by beat. Um, obviously, we don't have enough time for that. This is probably the uh, biggest differential between the length of the game and the length of the episode. And we we just recorded a four hour episode about Resident Evil Four. <laughs> yeah. uh, four hours. <laughs> like, four. Yeah, it, it's a half a day. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so we usually we take our time, but we're gonna move a little quicker. And it makes sense because of this game. It's not just the amount of our time limit, but also the fact that. Uh, so much of this game is repetitive and bland. Yep. Um, like it is, uh, you spend a lot of time just walking down the street, fighting guys in shorts. Uh, that's like honestly what you do. And it, it's, there's little to talk about there once you actually talk about the generalities of the battle system. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we gotta talk about this opening though, because Professor Oak, um, who is- Should be uh, in jail. Yep, he's very, uh, he seems well-meaning, but there's a, there's, a, there's a sinister element. You just think that he's, it's like he's smiling. Like yeah. He looks like a nice guy, but he's got that kind of like. Uh, he, he's a, he's a, it's a. He's, it's like Ted Cruz or he's, something. Like, it's like, he's, just like, it's like, he's got a smile, but he's like, I'm sure he's up to something. Like, <laughs> of all the people you could. This guy. Yeah, there are, did you say Ted Cruz too? Did they make a Ted Cruz too? <laughs> I, I, I'll watch that of, movie. Of all of the people that you could say look. Like on, on, like on the up and up, like for at a glance. <laughs> He's, he looks like a candle, but he smiles. A melted candle, but he looks like he smiles all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's like yeah, a yeah. sprite of him might yeah. look, you know, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but Professor Oka, he's smiling, but there's no smile in his eyes. Yeah, exactly. Very, That's you know, exactly what I was going to have. Yeah. Like he's <laughs> he's, uh, he's going to send some boys out to the death. <laughs> yeah. He's going he's gonna to save you. Just oh, to, hold on a second. Yeah. Do you think the way that the kids, Pokemon is to the kids? the player characters are to Professor Oak. Like, he's just fighting these two kids, sending them out into the world, and he's battling, <laughs> he's battling Ash and Gary. <laughs> so there's this meta level for adults and kids, like, if you zoom out. Yeah, like, so, so all of those, like, wait, so, so like, the, the shorts kids and the, and the nerds and the engineers. Yeah, those are like, all adults' Pokemons. Yeah. And in a weird way, like, once you have a kid, it is like you have this little thing you can train and evolve. <laughs> like, it evolves once at 13 and gets uglier, and, like, it totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We Cool. Did, did, did we learn drive? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you learned the bow, yeah. Bow is an HM that you have to get. Like, like yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we certainly, Gary, you just described the, uh, you described the plot to Rat Race. <laughs> Where there was people fight humans like Pokemon. I forget how old you are sometimes. Like, something like Rat Race would have any kind of influence at all. Like, you're going to pull out the eight heads in a double bag. Like, very bad things reference after this for this <laughs> Um, but yeah, anywho, so Oak is a monster, yeah. and uh, he's not in your pocket, and he sends out the boys, he's like, go, go do it. The amazing thing about it is you start out, and you're like, hey, Professor Oak wants you. You go get into the grass, a Pikachu shows up, Professor Oak stops you, he's like, you can't go there. Like, that Pikachu would have killed you. Like, there's no, like, you can't go through grass in this world without having, like, a thing. It's really, yeah. you know, it's still an attack. But, like, you can't see it because of the low, low resolution, but there are all kinds of, like, just uh, bait tusks of people out there in yeah. the grass. Yeah. It's like, 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 it's like a Bloodborne level. Yeah. See, so, yeah, I said we, we put it yeah, in. We have, but there we yeah. go. Yeah, there we go. Big room. Requisite. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so it's, it's you, um, canonically, Ash. Uh, or uh, Red is your character's name in Red and Blue, uh, versus Gary, uh, who is the worst. Uh, <laughs> and so he is, this, the Gary is Professor Oak's uh, grandson, and he greedily snaps up the Eevee, which leaves you with this disrespectful, just just monster of a Pikachu. Yeah, he's, he's a bad boy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you kind of move through these gems. Uh, early gems, uh, Brock is the rock type. Uh, Misty in the water gym. Um, it's kind of weird to kind of zigzag this in yellow because of type yeah. stuff. You know, when you uh, Misty is no problem because you have this Pikachu. Brock can be pretty tough. Uh, a lot of his Pokemon are immune to you. Yeah, um, and immune to a lot of the things that you can get. Like we said, that problem. Normal style attacks. Uh, your best bet if you're rolling up is to like trade up a bug. Yeah, like that. Like that is your only out. Which is not your out for any other thing because right. bug types are really underpowered. So it's weird. It plays really different than yeah. uh, the red and blue. Yeah, and then you go over to Misty, and that is an easy fight. Yeah, you know, especially with Pikachu, like water types. Nothing. Yeah. When I was when I was really young, uh, like I internalized the idea, the idea of weakness. Like I would see. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah. <I'm your> subject. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but like you watching like Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, and like oh, the, the the robots would go crazy when water was splashed on them, and like because I, I was I was a weak young man, uh, and still in a lot of ways, and had allergies, I, I saw that as like oh like robots are allergic to water. Oh, yeah. So like that's how I that's to this day that is still how I think about type. Because allergies. because you were allergic, did you think of yourself as weak to like grass type? Oh uh, yeah. Because you had allergies. Yeah, I was weak to outdoors. I was weak, weak to grass type. Yes. <laughs> Get him. We're both one thirty six. The uh, yeah. So uh, the go to Mount Moon is first dungeon. We'll talk about dungeons a little bit in general. Uh, they suck in Gen one. Boy. They're so like so. They're difficult to navigate. They do the cardinal sins of JRPG dungeons, which are like dead ends. There should never be a dead end in a JRPG dungeon that drives me up the wall. Yeah. Like, you put a treasure there or a monster or something, but don't just make me waste my time going to the end of a hallway and walking back. Yeah. I hate it. The encounter rate is incredibly high. Um, yes. yeah. And the variety of Pokemon you can get is very low. Yeah, um, uh, it, I hope you like Zubats. Uh, but you don't, because nobody yeah. does. Yeah, um, like the like the like the cave dungeons in Gen One. It's like trail mix that is mostly raisins. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> garbage. Uh, well, yeah, like, it is. So they um, and later games they they do better. You know, as far as general dungeon design, they'll put things at the end of pathways. They make them quicker. Just in general, um, they do a lot to try to make things better. One of the things about running that Zubat problem, though, that's interesting in going back to Gen One, is that it's a very popular opinion that um, once Pokemon got to modern levels, there's just too many Pokemon. But I find that the games are better the more there are, uh, because you run into a variety of things. You know, just like running into the same thing over and over and over is kind of boring. Yeah. So the you know, double it, triple it, give me <laughs> six thousand Pokemon, and you know, it, it could just be uh, like. Anything you find on the table, yeah. like, you know, they can all be Klefki level as long as there's something different because I'm going to be running into them over and over and over. Yeah. You know? Yep, and I can have my own personal pantheon. You know? Yeah. Like, let me let me build up my own list. I don't need to hold personal all of Personal pantheon pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, I, you know, we, we, we had the poker app. That was, what, three minutes? We don't need to have, like, the epic, like, rush oh, version of poker app. Like, <laughs> who, who's we? You got a mouse in your pocket? I think I need that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, but any of the caves, and like later on, they add uh, like boulder pushing puzzles um, where you have to uh, uh, move these things out of the way. It's almost like a little uh, not Sudoku. What's the uh, uh, crazy? Come on. Uh, Sokka Sokka, yeah, there Sokka we go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, so you get a little bit of those, like, and that's just a bummer because you have to activate those in the menu. Like somebody just 
quality of life considerations that are you know you just you sorely sorely miss going yeah. back to it and just the dungeons are they never get better here. Yep. Um, you end up going you take a little boat trip on the SS Annie um, or Anne, which is uh, essentially full of just sailors and gentlemen. <laughs> so I feel like that might be a YMCA kind of kind of thing. Um, but you do this to get to the captain who gives you cut. Yeah. Uh, which is the first HM that you're going to get, and is uh, lets you cut through regenerating nightmare trees that come back <laughs> um, all the time. But it's again just essentially a dungeon too, like just without my old Pokemon to run into. Yeah. So they can just like burst into somebody's cabin, and they will rightfully say, yeah. hey, "What are you doing here?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Crustal doctrine in full effect. <laughs> um, Crustal doctrine. That's the name of that crab Pokemon, right? Oh. Crustal. Okay. Wait, Rusty? Crustal? There's like there's a there's a hermit. Uh, Earth yeah. knows I'm tiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll check the tape, and I assure you that was a good joke. <laughs> if, you, if you research it on Bulbapedia, I assure you that was good, and you'll laugh in retrospect. When we get to our, per <laughs> when we get to our personal stories, uh, you'll understand why I didn't get that joke. Oh. Um, but um, uh, Celadon City kind of sits at the middle of uh, of, of Kanto here. And it's kind of the uh, the, the metropolis uh, yeah. with all four of its buildings. Um, and this has uh, two things going for it. it. Has like the shopping center where uh, you can buy all kinds of stuff. Like it's a it is it is a destination. Another thing they did in later generations that made it better is they give you more money. Uh, money is so tight in Gen One; it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like you have to grind for money a lot yeah. to do anything. And it's basically a finite resource too. Like you get it yeah. from uh, from trainers, and yeah. there are only so many of those that'll pop. Let's, um, so this is where we are introduced to Team Rocket. Uh, let's talk about these guys. Uh, these are colorful, colorful people with red. Uh, they're essentially the mob, but they dress uh, in like jumpsuits. Yeah, it's it's really weird. It's like uh, it's like su super villain mob. Yeah, Almost. super yeah. super villain mob. Like uh, Giovanni is explicitly a mob boss. Yeah. However, there's also Jesse and James <laughs> who are yeah. like. Like a Vegas, like a like a Siegfried and Roy kind of thing yeah. with our box. Yeah. Like it, it is, uh, yeah. yeah. It's and that's really all there is to it. And every generation comes up with a new villain, and they are better or worse. I think the best one they did was in um, Black and White, where it was somebody who was saying like, "Hey, these things are sentient. Let's not use them this way." Yep. And I was like, "I've been saying that for years. Like that is." I saw Mr. Mime write a fucking song. <laughs> like it is, you can't like just say like they are sentient. Uh, but um, wasn't there one like Team Galactic that was trying to like destroy the universe or something? Like that's that? true. Like, yeah. yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just all kinds. So I just like. Each of them has their own, like, like their own region. I want like a warrior style like mashup. Oh like man! Tell them. Like yeah, like Anchorman battle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Lavender Town too, because this is great. Oh yeah. Uh, well, no. Uh, in Celadon, oh. there's the the game center. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's very what? explicit. They are like laundering Pokemon that they like are capturing <laughs> through this game center. Like they're using them as prizes. Yeah. Ima imagine that. Again, like you, you are sentient. And this is your prize at like a Chuck E. Cheese. Yep. Seven, seven, seven. Here's a puppy. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, here's a here's a, a, a small boy. Like, like, this, um, this thing knows how to use a spoon. Um, it very much wants to get away from you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Lavender Town. Lavender Town's great. Yeah, this um, is this is pretty pretty awesome and dark. Yeah. So Lavender Town is where the Pokemon Tower is, and uh, this is where people kind of lay their Pokemon to rest and go to like pray to their spirits and stuff. It's kind of a cute thing for like kids to have this in a game because it's kind of as a parable like dead pets. Like I imagine there are kids who like literally learned about death from this, like understood that like oh you keep writing to people like I'm mourning this guy he'll still be with me I need to remember him but he's gone now you know it's the same yeah. language that people use for dead pets. Yeah. Uh, but also, it could probably instill uh, a fear in them because this tower is also full of possessed nuns here <laughs> yeah. uh, who like run up to you going. <laughs> yeah. It's haunted by a Marowak. Yeah. So that's uh, which is Cubone's mom, and like that's a weird little bit of like lore connection in this. It's like oh, you get a Cubone, you're like his mom's dead, and then you run into the ghost of his mom later. Like yeah. it's a real Chekhov skull kind of thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. and so and there's something that's like a, a little bit disappointing. It's the lack of ghost type Pokemon in Gen One. Oh yeah. Like it is just the one evolutionary line. There's the they're a real specialty niche. I can understand because it's a real powerful type, but like. When you walk through this area the first time, like a ghost just presents as like this uh, kind of goofy looking gas monster. Um, and then you have to go get like a, like a scope, like night vision goggles to identify the ghost. And they're just a different type of goofy looking gas monster. <laughs> um, so 
Um, that like that is a bit of a bummer. Like I want I want basically a Pokemon Undead version. Yeah, which yeah. which comes later. There are tons of awesome ghost types. Yeah, yeah. Um, like that ghost sword. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Aegis Slash is great. <laughs> um, you have to deal with Snorlax, um, which I only have the notes. It's such a minor thing. You get this Poke Flute to wake up a Snorlax, but I love that this is just a hazard in the road. Like. We just can't go to this town because there's like this guy has decided to take a nap here, <laughs> and like that's just it. And there's like it's very again it's very funny. And it's trying to be there's like construction. There's these people like kind of wandering around explaining it. Like yeah, sorry, the bridge got Snorlax. Like, <laughs> you know, Musha told you. Like it, it is just uh, it's really it's, it's very great. And then you get the best Pokemon of all time. In later generations, he comes with leftovers. That's a Tauros, right? Like that has to be another sentient being because he I'm sure he's meat. He's a bear thing. <laughs> that has to be just another friend. Well, in his entry in the uh, Pokemon Yellow Pokedex, it talks about how he doesn't care if food goes bad. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's just out there eating moldy, <laughs> like, yeah. moldy tauruses. He's a bottom feeder, and that's why I love him. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Really strong when you fight him, too. Like, they're level yeah. 30. Like, the, the, that is a meat. So it is a figurative and literal meat wall. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can go. What's that? We're going to pick up the pace a little bit. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Silphco, that's uh, one of the places where you can go. Team Rocket is getting in with some corporate craft. Mm -hmm. um, Safari Zone. Yeah, this uh, is uh, kind of weird. It is like a mini game where you the normal rules of catching Pokemon no longer apply. Um, you just throw balls and you can either uh, give the Pokemon, you can throw uh, bait, I think, which makes them harder to catch but less likely to run. Or a rock, which makes them more likely to run, but easier to catch. Yeah. And uh, um, usually, you actually just want to keep tapping A, and you'll eventually just luck out. Like. Yeah. yeah. I like throwing rocks at eggs. Um, yeah. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cinnabar Island is where they're doing a lot of research into this mythical uh, Pokemon named Mew. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> who will we'll come up later? Yeah. Um, yeah, and you you find uh, this is in the Pokemon Mansion. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this, uh, again, this is there's like, again, we're passing all this stuff, but this is giving you keys or making trainers trigger to go back to their gym so you can advance yeah. in the game. Um, eventually, after you uh, you fight Blaine, uh, who is the dragon master there, um, you go to, uh, is that true? I think it's uh, Blaine. Fire type. Oh, fire type, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah uh, you go to Victory Road uh, to the Indigo Plateau, which is only available after you get all eight badges, and you fight the, uh, the Elite Four. Yes. Um, which do a little bit to kind of like spice things up, like they're kind of weird types. Um, Lorelei is a water and ice trainer. We haven't run into lots of ice type no, Pokemon. No, like, like ice types are really rare. Like if you're usually facing up against ice uh, moves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you have uh, you have Bruno, who's a fighting type. You wouldn't get a fighting type gym until Gen two, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Agatha does ghost and poison type, which those are hard to guard. Those against. are hard to hit. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Lance, uh, this real uh, weirdo looking guy, uh, does dragon type stuff. And uh, again, just like these real weirdo, like there's only one line in Gen 1 of monsters that, uh, that fills that, and knowing how to counter that is, is really difficult. Yeah. Um, and then eventually you fight Gary, who, despite the fact that you wipe the floor with him every single time you run into him, is somehow ahead of you, and mm -hmm. has done this already. Um, then Oak shows up and chides you, uh, both, <laughs> and chides his son specifically, and was like, this other, this grandson I wish I had is way better at this, and also learned all the lessons I wanted you to learn. Yeah. Tell your mother I'm disappointed in you. Like it's just it is you know it's the worst. Abusive grandpa. Um, yeah. And then there are kind of these cursed or secret kind of hidden side dungeons where you can get legendary Pokemon. Um, yes. The three birds, um, which are this is a series tradition. Um, they'd have one or two different kind of legendary uh, things here, or three I think in the yeah. Gen two. Um, Arcturuno, uh, Zapdos, and Moltres. And then eventually you can also find Mewtwo, these super science like Pokemon. Yeah. Like there are parts of the anime and parts of this game that feel like they're written by Mewtwo. <laughs> like it's, it's written by Mewtwo's publicist. Like it is uh, very much uh, like whenever Mewtwo's not on the screen, everyone should be saying, "Hey, where's Mewtwo?" Yeah. <laughs> like there's an element of that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it, so Mew, uh, who is the 151st Pokemon, can only either be gotten through a glitch or uh, from like specific events. Yes. Um, so everybody, let's go back to 1999. Yeah. Um, we have a door back here that'll take you there. <laughs> yeah. Um, <right. laughs> Hopefully you speak the language, because you can go to this, like, um... So yeah, so that's how you get Mew. They're really powerful. Mew and Mewtwo are very powerful. Because uh, it's not very balanced. Because the the secret is, as much as this formed a foundation for games I very much like, it's very hard to call Gen 1 Pokemon a good game. Right. Uh, I don't think there's very much reason to play it other than nostalgia. Yeah. Uh, it kind of bums me out. Like, and it's it's a series that has gotten better with every iteration. Like, they've just made improvements, I think. And, like, sometimes the Pokemon get goofier. Like, I was mad about the ice cream cone that evolves into two ice cream cones. <laughs> but, like, I, I do think that it has just gotten so much easier to play. 
and that's huge. Yeah. Like, ease of use is, is a really huge consideration for this type of game. Yeah, and even like going to Gen 2, they added uh, some minor stuff that yeah. would end up making a big difference for Yeah, them. and like yeah. just the complications that make this kind of simple game more, you know, more tolerable, so like day and night, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think we kind of covered uh, kind of personal memories and stuff. Who is your uh, favorite Pokemon, Cole? Um, my favorite Pokemon is Zapdos, actually. Oh. Um, I just, there's something about this crazy Thunderbird that takes up in an, uh, in an abandoned power plant that is made of triangles. Um, just had always been. He's a Dorito um, monster. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like Doritos, but like, cool just, there's, there's, a, there's something about his shape that is really appealing to me. It's because um, he, uh, he looks like a, like a glyph or something, not like a creature. Yeah. Like he looks like a design, like it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah uh, he looks really cool in the, like the the, the uh, 3D games, like the stadium or whatever. Yeah. Like like when he moves. I don't know. Like, uh, really dumb reasons. Just say I, I like that. Thunder he kind of looks like VR in the new Deus Ex. Oh yeah. Like kind of like is this like all triangles, like all Zapdos <laughs> yeah. all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also like Oddish a lot. He's, um, he's cutie. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame what happens to Oddish. <laughs> that middle generation where he's constantly <laughs> drooling poison on you. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also in his description, that was one that I almost left out. He's a he's a mandragore. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you know, so if you if you accidentally if you're pulling weeds and you pull up an Oddish, he screams and it won't stop screaming. Oh. <laughs> There's so many Pokemon that we would have hunted to extinction. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, no, like so this hit me at the right time. Like I'm I'm 20, I'm seven, seven years younger than Gary, um, but uh, like right in the pocket, it came out when I was like 11, 12, and it was such a huge deal. But like I fell off right after Gen 2. Like the last one I really played was uh, was Silver. Um, but I'm excited to get back into Moon. Like. It's crazy that this is still around and like yeah. getting better. And and Sun and Moon, I'm really excited for Sun and Moon because it's leaning into this ridiculousness. Like the fact that like the special Doug Driogas are wearing wigs. Like I feel like there's an element of the series taking itself seriously that is gone now. And now it's just whatever is goofy and funny. And I, I'm kind of into it leaning full board into that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I stick with it. I've played every generation except for Ruby and Sapphire. So I, I like these games. It's just, it's a plain game for me, like if I'm gonna fly back home. Like, I think this passes the time on playing really well. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Pokemon. Yeah. The, um, yeah, I think we're just about, uh, just about out of time. Um, so thank you guys uh, very much for coming. Um, the, uh, if you guys are not familiar with the network, this is a, a small sample. We do this as a kind of the abbreviated version. But if you go to uh, duckfeed.tv, we have a bunch of different shows, um, different shows on different things. Um, you can uh, find something that hopefully you like. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'd love it if you checked it out. Yeah. Um, we are uh, at booth number 162. Um, and we're set up, we're playing Pokemon Yellow, uh, trying to catch as many as we can, which ends up not being a lot. Yep. But we'd love if you... We're like a good, a solid 35 near the end of the day on day two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you want Personal to is over, a kind of success. Yeah. Come over, uh, say hey, uh, grab uh, buttons, stickers, things like that. We'd love to uh, talk with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's about what we got. So thanks, guys. Thank you. We really do appreciate it.